thank you for joining with me. We are with Ken Wapnick, PhD, in his journey through the text of A Course in Miracles. And today we are on Chapter 5, Healing and Wholeness. We are picking up our reading on guilt. Chapter 5, Healing and Wholeness. One of the ego's chief weapons in its war against God, and specifically in its war against our choosing God, is guilt. This chapter introduces us to this concept with an entire section devoted to it, titled The Ego's Use of Guilt. But the topic is pretty much dropped after that until the next full treatment in chapter 13. Discussed here is how guilt is used by the ego to preserve the belief in sin. Guilt tells us we have sinned and because of our sin, we deserve to be punished proving that the separated ego is real. If the ego is the symbol of the separation, it is also the symbol of guilt. Guilt is more than merely not of God. It is the symbol of attack on God. This is a totally meaningless concept except to the ego but do not underestimate the power of the ego's belief in it. This is the belief from which all guilt really stems. Guilt then reinforces our belief in sin, the belief we attacked God by separating from him. Insane though this, may, this thought may be, we still believe in it because we like being in an ego. This aspect of our split mind welcomes any idea that supports its thought system of separation and attack. As we now read, The ego is the part of the mind that believes in division. How could part of God detach itself without believing it is attacking him? We spoke before of the authority problem as based on the concept of usurping God's power. The ego believes that this is what you did because it believes that it is you. If you identify with the ego, you must perceive yourself as guilty. Whenever you respond to your ego, you will experience guilt and you will fear punishment. This is the now familiar constellation of sin, guilt, fear the heart of the ego's thought system of separation. The sin of believing we attacked God by usurping his place on the throne of creation. The core authority problem. The guilt that tells us that what we did was terrible and the punishment we fear we will suffer as a result. The guilt, I'm sorry, the ego, I don't know where that, the ego is quite literally a fearful thought. However ridiculous the idea of attacking God may be to the sane mind, never forget that the ego is not sane. It represents a delusional system and speaks for it. Listening to the ego's voice means that you believe it is possible to attack God and that a part of him has been torn away by you. Fear of retaliation from without follows because the severity of the guilt is so acute that it must be projected. Having projected our guilt, we believe that others will punish us, and forgetting that their guilt is ours, we inevitably believe their punishment of us is sinful. Every country that attacks another, for example, believes it never makes the first attack. Sure, we bombed you, but you sinned first. We go back and forth with this vicious game of guilt, and no one recognizes that everyone did it first because we all sinned together. Fragmenting and then projecting our sinful selves resulted in the insanely magical belief that the other party did it, and not us. Every war or battle, individual or collective, that has ever been fought is being fought now 
and will be fought in the future is part of this same insanity. A madness that can never end unless we rise above the battleground of guilt and attack and choose the innocence of Christ instead of the guilt-ridden and sinful son. I said before that illness is a form of magic. That was in chapter 2. It might be better to say that it is a form of magical solution. The ego believes that by punishing itself, it will mitigate the punishment of God. Yet, even in this, It is arrogant. It attributes to God a punishing intent and then takes this intent as its own prerogative. Jesus is teaching us that choosing to get sick is a magical attempt to solve the problem of God's wrath. Its arrogance says to God, please do not concern yourself with punishing me. I will take care of it myself. See how sick I am and how I suffer? That is my atonement for my sin against you. The arrogance lies in our first casting God in the role of wrathful avenger and then taking it from him by declaring that we will punish ourselves without him. The insane hope is that God will be so dumb that he will not destroy us but take pity on us instead. Our special hate becomes special love, and we, ever arrogant, ask God to alleviate the suffering that we chose as a defense against him. However, this insane plan does not work, since this assertion of God's role reminds us of our original assertion when we believed we stole God's role as creator substituting the ego's miscreations of self and world for his glorious creation of the self of Christ. Our guilt then continually recycles and suffering, not peace, becomes our justified fate. Needless to say, this thinking is highly disordered since it has departed from the ordered oneness of God's perfection. And I'm going to stop right there and we will pick up on this ending section of guilt tomorrow and then pick up and then read further on into the decision for forgiveness. I thank you so much for joining with me and I will see you then. Have a beautiful day. I love you.